Hey guys, this is Sam, a new iPhone 8 leaks and rumors are coming out practically every single day. So I wanna talk about what we can expect to see from the device when it releases, hopefully later in 2017. So up first, there are gonna be three new iPhone models coming later in 2017. Two iPhone 7S's, which will be the iPhone 7S and the iPhone 7S Plus, in addition to the ultra premium, building on top of the already premium iPhone 7, ultra premium iPhone 8, which is just gonna blow everybody else out of the water. What's weird is that we don't know that much about the iPhone 7S or the iPhone 7s plus they're gonna be minor upgrades i would say similar to the 6s to the 7 or the 6 to the 6s like there are going to be upgrades we just learned today that wireless charging is actually coming to all iphone models and we'll talk about that a little bit more later on in the video but we we don't know that much it's going to remain the same design as the 7 and 7 plus but with some minor upgrades but back to the iphone 8 this thing is gonna be amazing. It's gonna have a 5.8 inch OLED display covering the entire front of the screen and new leaked images from today show just how beautiful this is gonna look. The entire front of the phone is gonna be screen with a small cutout in the middle for the speaker and it looks like some facial recognition cameras in addition to the front facing camera also wanna get into that a little bit more in just a little bit. But I wanna hear your thoughts on this. Do you like this final design for the iPhone 8? We're seeing more and more images every week that corroborate on this design and I am a a huge fan. I like the Galaxy S8, but I'm not a huge fan of the edges that wrap around the side of the phone. It doesn't look like Apple's going in that direction. There is going to be a super thin bezel along the sides, but I think it looks incredible. To the right of this image, we get a look at the back of the iPhone 8, which is going to have a vertical camera, basically taking the horizontal dual camera system on the iPhone 7 Plus rotating it a little bit and then placing it on the back of the iPhone 8, which I'm super excited for. Apple, speaking about the cameras, is said to be experimenting with some 3D technology, not only for like some front facing iris scanning features, which alone would be really cool, but maybe with sensing objects in the background, experimenting with AR or augmented reality. I respect all you plus sized iPhone users. You get amazing battery life, but it's just too big for these hands right here. So I'm excited for the iPhone 8 to be just similar in size to the iPhone 7, but a little bit taller, wider, and thicker, but not by a lot. So the device is gonna be just a little bit bigger than the iPhone 7, but with that being said, we get an amazing benefit. I don't know about you guys, but my iPhone doesn't get good battery life. And every year Apple says that it gets better, but the truth is I think that only happens to the plus size models just because Apple does have a lot of real estate to put a battery in. With the iPhone 8, we're gonna get a new L-shaped battery design that is gonna be bigger, finally a bigger battery, not just software improvements, not just upgrades behind the scenes for the iPhone 8 to make the battery life better, but a physical bigger battery for the iPhone 8. And if you're excited for this, let me know what you think down below in the comment section and drop a like because I can't wait for better battery life on my iPhone. So there are a couple more things we can notice from these images. Number one, the glass back on the iPhone 8. This is coming back, it's not gonna be slate like it is on the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 7 Plus, with the exception of jet black, but it looks like it's gonna be black. We haven't seen any white iPhones leak and it's gonna be reflective and glossy, similar to jet black. But a lot of this reminds me of the iPhone 4's design. Here's a picture to refresh anybody that hasn't used an iPhone 4 or an iPhone 4S. It's really a dated design, but it's sort of making a comeback. And this is something we heard about a long time ago. I think Bloomberg, uh, wrote an article a while back talking about how the iPhone 8 would feature a design reminiscent of the iPhone 4, definitely not a copy, but similar with stainless steel around some of the edges. Once again, you can see that on the camera, but a glass design on the front and back. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm just not a huge fan of the stainless steel. Now, the last thing that you should be super hyped about in regards to these images is that Touch ID is not on the back. I was getting real worried get a little scared, had a couple sleepless nights thrown in there, sprinkled in the mix, that the Touch ID sensor will be placed on the back. So if you have fingers, you are going to be happy that it's somehow going to be embedded in the front of the display. It's interesting here that we don't see a home button. It doesn't look like we will be seeing a physical home button of any type. Uh, on the iPhone 8. I assume it's gonna be something like the pressure sensitive version on the iPhone 7, but baked into the display, I think it'd be amazing if Apple somehow integrated Touch ID anywhere on the screen, so you could just place your thumbprint on the screen and scan in like so. That would be incredible, probably really hard to make a thing, but I'd be excited. Now, earlier I previewed that wireless charging would finally be coming to the iPhone, and we learned today that it's gonna be coming to all new iPhone models, not just the iPhone 8 like it was previously expected. We're gonna be seeing wireless charging on the iPhone 7S, the iPhone 7S Plus, and the iPhone 8, which is exciting for anybody that wasn't planning to take the huge leap to the iPhone 8, which is gonna be expensive, and we'll cover that in a little bit because price 
is a big player this time around. I think wireless charging is gonna be cool, but personally, I don't see the point because in most cases, you're setting a phone on a pad. No, it's wireless charging, like the name implies what it is, but the pad has a wire going to it, and then you're just setting your, your phone on a wired pad. I thought the whole point was for it to be wireless. I mean, it makes sense in a lot of cases, it's slower than just plugging a cable into your phone. It's a good idea, it'll be cool to demo or, or take a look at on the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 7S and the iPhone 7S Plus as well, but personally, I'm not a huge hype man for wireless charging. It'll be cool, but not groundbreaking. Now expected to power the iPhone 8 is the Apple A11 Fusion chip. And like Apple does so well, it's a secret. We don't know how fast it's gonna be. It's gonna be a lot faster than the A10X Fusion chip coming in the new 10.5 inch iPad Pro, which I'll have videos on soon if you're interested in checking out, or if it's just gonna be some minor upgrades or huge upgrades, we don't know. It's gonna be and upgrade over the iPhone 7 and the 7 Plus, but we don't know by how much, and I'm sure it'll be an M11 motion coprocessor built inside of that as well. With that being said, we're gonna be seeing three gigabytes of RAM in the iPhone 8, which is exciting because I think there's only two in the standard iPhone 7 and maybe three in the iPhone 7 Plus. Either way, three gigabytes of RAM is gonna be awesome because iOS already handles RAM so well and having an extra gigabyte in there to mess around with is only gonna make things run smoother. Now, one of the final upgrades we're expecting to see with the iPhone 8 is stepping up from IP67 waterproofing to IP68, which means it's gonna be able to last in water over a meter. I think the iPhone 7 is 30 minutes up to one meter. This is probably gonna be over 30 minutes over one meter. We don't know how waterproof it will be, but it's gonna be pretty good. Still not the guy to just throw my iPhones in lakes, rivers, and oceans, but if you do, it'll be safer in more water for a longer period of time. So the iPhone 8 is looking to be pretty incredible. I can't wait to get my hands on a device later this year, which we can expect to see probably from September to November. Now, generally new iPhones come out in September, but because of all these high quality components like OLED displays, a new version of 3D Touch to adhere to that display, vertical cameras, glass backs, and stainless steel, that stuff can take a while to manufacture along with new chips and everything else that goes into the iPhone. So usually we do see it in September, but this year it could be pushed back all the way to October or November. I think one analyst said early 2018 we would see it, but my bets are on sometime in October or November. Now, the last thing you should know about the iPhone 8 is that it's going to be expensive. Sure, you'll be able to get your hands on it in October or November 2017, but we have seen estimates of upwards of 850 bucks for this device because they're throwing in a lot of premium materials. It's gonna be a great device. Like, that is not a question anymore. It's just, can you afford it? For me, it's gonna be expensive. Uh, I don't get sent products from Apple for anybody interested just because I'm not at that subscriber threshold. I don't get like the millions of views yet to where they actually care. So I have to buy the device for myself, just like all of you. Uh, it's gonna be expensive, like $850, $950, somewhere around there, some people have said over a thousand, it's gonna be an expensive device. Um, is it gonna be worth it? We'll have to wait and try it out for ourselves, but if you're gonna save up for that iPhone 8, I'd recommend starting now or rewinding time so you can start even earlier. It's gonna be expensive, and that is the last thing you should know about the iPhone 8. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to drop a like down below, and of course, subscribe for more news on the iPhone 8 and Apple stuff in the future. I've been Sam, I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you later.